Hi there, and welcome to Pimp Your Science. Let's now talk about how to deliver an amazing scientific talk. And let us focus on the three golden rules behind any stunning scientific presentation, as well as how to unlock a secret door to the full audience attention. The rule number one says the audience will feel and appreciate if you have practiced your talk. You probably heard this many times, but you still think there are these natural speakers, and maybe you're not one of them. And I tell you now here that there are no natural speakers. There are only those that practice their talks and those that don't. And when I say practice, what I really think is not practicing in front of your laptop, in your lab or at home or under the shower. I mean going into the seminar room of your institute, bringing your presentation with you, projecting it on a wall and going through it, talking, talking through it. You have to do this at least three to five times before each presentation you're going to give. If you do that, you get the needed self-confidence once the game is real. You will also get a feeling of time. Many presenters go over time just because they didn't practice. Practicing will give you the feeling where are you at each moment of your presentation. And most important, you will get a feeling of your audience. Now since you practice and, uh, and you know your presentation by heart, you can concentrate on the reactions and feeling of your audience and you can adjust the speed, the tone, everything according to your audience reactions. It's like a jazz musician. You know the piece and now you can play with it. Okay, the rule number two says that audience will feel if you took time to think about what you're going to present and how are you going to present them. Of course, I know that for most of you this seems so obvious and you think you're already doing it. However, in 10 years of research experience, I have noticed that many people work on their presentations a day before a seminar or on the plane leading to their seminar or on the seminar itself while waiting their row. So if you are doing that, that means also that you did not have time to practice what you are changing, inserting or removing. I have to emphasize here that you need to talk, think in advance about what you are going to present, a week in advance, because presenting your data to your friends in a pub or to a small seminar of experts in your field or on a big meeting or ultimately to your grandma are absolutely different things and you should do it in a different way. You should take time to think how. Bottom line is that of course it's nice that you understand what you are doing, but it's really, really awesome if the audience get the story as well. So you need to do it right. For example, when you are thinking about your introduction, you need to think how deep and how broad should you go into presenting a big picture. Of course, that if you are on the Alzheimer meeting, you don't need to convince audience that working in Alzheimer is important. But if you are on a general neuroscience meeting, you should emphasize this a bit more. Also, when you pose your question, you should relate it to a big picture. You should put it in a context of a big picture so the audience get the importance of your work and your findings. You should also structure your talk in a way that is clearly understandable for everybody in the audience and that they can follow it easily. Similarly, you should simplify your data. Even expert audience will appreciate this. Because unlike when reading a scientific paper where you have 5 to 10 minutes time to look at each figure, now you have 30 seconds up to a minute to get the message from the bunch of data presented on one slide. Hence, you need to think about how to simplify it. You should also use visual ads, pictures instead of words, to convey your message. This is even more important if you are talking to lay audience or non-experts, because pictures tend to stick better in the brain. Finally, please tell a story. Presenting, presenting your data is not only about presenting what you have achieved in the last few months or a year, but it's about putting this data in a context of an interesting story that will intrigue your audience to read more, to get more information after your talk, either from you or from the literature. So think about telling a story. The rule number T is simple. Audience will feel 
your enthusiasm. Let's clarify the thing. Knowledge is good and expertise is great, but enthusiasm is contagious. If you are not enthusiastic about your project, you cannot expect other people to be. However, if you show motivation and if you show engagement, they will recognize this. They will jump on the boat where you are because they want to be in the middle of the excited scientific story. So how to do that? Simple. Smile at your audience. They will smile back and they will make and this will make this kind of a relaxed atmosphere in which you are going to present. Look at your audience at all time. This is like we're talking with your friend. You look at your friend's eyes when you talk with her or him. So you should do that with audience. In that way you build this feeling of trust in which you are giving them some information. Also use your body language, use your hands, your voice, your facial expression to express and convey your feelings. All this together will motivate your audience to listen to you. Okay, I know that some of you may say, well, this all sounds great, but you see, in reality, I'm not really enthusiastic about my project. So for those, I have one tip, and this is, fake it until you feel it. If you practice the three golden rules, and you practice this every time before your talk, I can promise that endings of your talks would look like this. And wouldn't this be great? However, this will work only if you know a secret door to your audience intention. So let's see what that is. Let's first look at the audience attention as a function of a time of, a, of an average scientific talk. So in the beginning, which is like three to five minutes, the audience intention is really high because people came with interest to hear a speaker and to learn something new. However, in an average scientific talk, next 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the talk, looks like this. The audience attention drops dramatically. In essence, the brain just switch off. And this lasts until the last or conclusion part, where we wake up to hear the take home message or see some interesting graphs. So no wonder that question and answer question of most scientific talks looks something like this where nobody except maybe an organizer is asking a question. However, there are things that you can do to improve audience intention and make it high throughout the whole presentation. And the secret is in organizing the first three minutes of your presentations. Since you have the first three minutes to win your audience full attention, you need to make this part very strong. And now I'll show you how. When you are preparing your first slide, the first thing you need to think about is a short and catchy title. This is not a scientific paper. Long and boring titles with names of genes or proteins or whatever are just not for this. You need short stuff. You need things that will attract your audience to listen. Like eat yourself to know yourself or, or life after that. I mean, who would not like to know what happens after that? In addition, you need to think about good catchy images. If you are talking about Alzheimer's disease, this picture is just perfect to present the state of the research at the moment. This sticks to, your, to the brain of your audience. In the first three minutes, which may equal three to four slides, you should show a big picture to your audience. You should show why the research in your field matters. If you work in a field of Alzheimer's disease, that's not such a big problem because Alzheimer is also a social problem. However, for other fields, this may be a bit challenging. So you need to think about this. You should also emphasize a point that will shock your audience. In that way, they will be attached to hear more about your research. For example, in the Alzheimer field, you can emphasize that the US alone is spending $200 billion in giving care to Alzheimer patients. It is important to work in it. Moreover, you have to put your project in the context of a big picture, so your audience get the importance of your findings. How will they affect the big picture? Also, what I recommend in the first three minutes is to make a clear statement about what have you found. 
the best is to convey it in a form of a picture. Of course, you can have a sentence or two on that. But putting that on the beginning is a very powerful because your audience attention at this moment is the highest. So they get a take-home message now. So the rest of the talk you can actually spend convincing them that you actually have shown this. I know what you are thinking now. All that in three minutes? Are you crazy? And the answer is simple. Yes, I am crazy. And yes, all that in three minutes. Just remember the three golden rules. Think, practice and show your enthusiasm. And if I wake you in the middle of the night and you know your first three minutes, then you are ready for a great presentation. And just to clarify one more thing. Three minute introduction is all what you have if you're presenting on a conference or on a meeting where the, the allowed time is 10 to 15 minutes. However, if you're invited to give a speech which is 30 to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, then this is more like a trailer. This is more like a hook for your audience. And then after placing the hook, you can go and give up more details about background or methods and whatever you want. Let me give you now just a few helpful tips how to deliver your three minutes part. So how to reduce your speech anxiety? The public speaking is the fear number one among general population. And we said you have only three minutes to deliver a powerful message. So if you mess this thing up, your audience will just switch off. So before you're going into the seminar room, what I recommend is to practice five minutes a power pose exercise. This is a powerful method in which the body posture itself can influence your hormones and prepare you for a great stress. If you're interested to hear more, you should look at the beautiful talk of Amy Cuddy from Harvard at TED Talks. The second thing is once you are on a stage, you should make a short funny comment about the city you are in, about the place itself, about the meeting itself. This is just to relax a bit everybody, just to relax a bit yourself. And of course, don't make a joke. You don't want to be a clown, just a funny comment. And please do not start your presentation with a, I would like to thank organizer. That's so boring and you are wasting your time. In the first three minutes of your talk, you should also look at the audience at all time. Of course, this is important throughout the talk, but now it's critical. Now the attention of your audience is the highest, so you want to catch them now. If you look at their eyes, they will look at your eyes. And in that way, they will magically be attached to whatever you say. In addition, use words like surprisingly or unexpectedly or importantly. These are the words that will just attach them more and more in the intriguing story that you are going to tell them. So, if you're taking these advices and tips into your talk, in your three minutes, in your first three minutes of presentation, you will set up a hook for your audience and they will just want more and more. And if you follow the three golden rules of presentation, your question and answer session will look something like this. Everybody rising hands and everybody thirsty for more. And I think that's great.